This is Kodak Varicolor 2. This particular batch expired in 1978. Now with expired film, if you don't know how it was stored over the years, it's really anyone's guess as to how it's going to turn out. Fortunately, I have multiple rolls, so I'm able to experiment and bracket and try to dial it in. And a huge shout out to Garrett, who reached out to me a while back asking me if I'd be interested in some old film. I said yes, and after some back and forth, he sent me a few rolls. Alright, maybe more than a few rolls. There's a lot of interesting things here, and I plan on eventually shooting most of this stuff. But for today, back to this. I'm not really familiar with Varicolor. Case in point, I didn't know what box speed this film was. At a quick glance, I couldn't see it on the box, and it didn't say on the wrapper or the backing paper either. So I looked up a data sheet and it said it was ASA 125, and that's what I based my first exposures on. And then I realized that these rolls are actually ASA 100. Kodak did a really good job hiding this in plain sight. So what I learned is there seems to be two flavors of Varicolor 2. The older 100 speed and the newer 125 speed, both named Varicolor 2 Professional. There's also a 160 speed variant, but Kodak at least had the decency of calling that Varicolor 3. Anyway, with this first roll, I just went in blind. The only thing I knew about this film was that it was not stored properly over the years, and it was most likely going to be fogged. Looking at the negatives, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I metered the first few frames at 125, and the rest were overexposed by 3 to 5-ish stops. Why 3 to 5? I don't know. I just winged it, and lucky for me, it just kind of worked out. To drive that point home, I also bracketed these test chart shots. This one shot at box speed, this one was overexposed by 5 stops, and this one was overexposed by 10 stops. In terms of negative density, the one that was overexposed by 5 stops looks the best. But unfortunately, that means that I'd have to shoot this film at around EI3. Luckily, the sun was out, so I was able to shoot this handheld, but it was cutting it kind of close. Overall, I think these actually turned out pretty good. Even the ones that were underexposed, I was able to pull a good amount of detail, and there wasn't a crazy amount of color shifting. Besides needing to overexpose this by five stops, I'd say these turned out pretty okay. Next, I bleach bypassed a roll. Bleach bypass causes the film to lose saturation and increase contrast. The colors are washed out, but overall, these also came out about as well as I could have hoped. There's really not much more to say about this. With that, I decided to try developing this as a positive. I've been recently messing around with the DIY reversal process using black and white and C41 chemistry to make positives. I've had mostly good, but inconsistent results, so I thought it'd be a good practice to try this on some really old, expired film. Yeah, there's something not right about this. Here's this one frame scanned in as a negative, and this is probably the best normal looking picture out of the bunch. In some of these other shots, it looks like the shadows are in this pink purple haze and the colors are just completely off. Like this almost looks like Lomo Turquoise. Now, if you look at the film itself, but focus on the green hazy parts, you could actually see a positive image. And if I bring down the greens a little bit, you could see that the colors look, relatively speaking, normal. But the sky and the ground is way off. My best guess is that I botched the reversal step. I pulled the film out of the tank and exposed it to the light, but maybe I needed to do that longer or maybe a different light. I'm not really sure. Now there's one interesting thing to point out. This frame with the test chart, when scanned in as a negative, it looks like this. The colors are obviously way off, but if you focus on these three squares, it should be red, green, and blue. But if you look at the film, red, green, blue. It's not color accurate, but it's at least in the general area. If you compare the other colors to the chart, they actually kind of match up, except the column on the left. That is supposed to be white, and that is supposed to be black. 
but here it's inverted. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on here, but I figure it's worth mentioning. Obviously I need more practice, but in the meantime, this is what you get. Finally, for this last roll, I decided to trichrome it. I developed this in black and white chemistry and these negatives came out looking really dense. But after trichroming it, it came out about as well as I could have hoped. It's a lot better than the reversal process. So it's got that going for it. Going into this, I didn't know what to expect. This film is almost 50 years expired and it wasn't stored properly during that time. I've seen film one or two decades expired come out completely unusable. So it was a welcome surprise to be able to get anything, even after doing some terrible things to it. So to wrap this all up, once again, huge shout out to Garrett for sending this film over and thanks for sending film that wasn't completely trashed. I was expecting the worst, so this was a pleasant surprise. Although I don't really expect the same results from this Kodakolor 1000 that was also sent over. <laughs>